Welcome back to the roast of Davina, a woman who always carries herself with the cool, calm composure of someone who's just had a lit cigarette drop down her bra. <laughs> Let's have a little catch up with our big brother friends. How are they? They all right? Why is one of them dressed as a pirate? <laughs> You have a big forehead. Yeah, Jimmy's got a big forehead. That's He's got true. a big foreskin. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Mario's <laughs> dissing me there with the foreskin gags. Oh God, love him. Hope I never have a stroke. I presume that's what happened to Mario's face. I'm not sure. Next up, he's smart, funny, and his humour is layered with irony and pathos. No wonder they made him leave America. Please welcome Mr. Rich Hall. Thank you so much. <laughs> I have, uh, I've never watched Big Brother. I'd rather have a beach umbrella shoved up my cock. <laughs> and opened before I will watch Big Brother. I would rather be put into a barrel of rusty barbed wire and roll down the cheddar gorge into a pit of mercury tailings than endure an episode of Big Brother. I'd rather have to eat at the Aberdeen Steakhouse <laughs> The reason I don't watch Big Brother is because uh, I have crackhead neighbors and I have night vision goggles <laughs> And that's good enough for me, ladies and gentlemen I don't need to see Davina McCall's vulpine face popping up every five minutes <laughs> Telling me to watch my language. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a lovely face. It is a look at it, ladies and gentlemen. That is a friendly, chirpy, happy, shining face. That is a lovely face, and it's a definite respite from the stoked to finally talentless gaggle of fame whores, <laughs> lamppost hookers. Couch spuds, date rapers, and human rodentia that pass through the Big Brother house in some desperate effort to be famous. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you're in Big Brother, you're not famous. You're a creep. <laughs> you're not in show business. You are marginally connected to show business slightly more than a guy who's just written six letters to Jody Foster, all right? <laughs> But Davina is the shining, happy, chirpy face. She's lovely, lovely face. She's like the hospitality coordinator at an abattoir. <laughs> but wait a minute, Rich. She just didn't present Big Brother. No, she made an exercise weight loss video. It's a good thing dignity doesn't have any weight. <laughs> if it did, there'd be nothing left of you except a pile of bones. <laughs> bags of silicone. Okay, anyway, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm sure they're real. I'm sure they're real. It is reality I wish they TV. Weren't. I know. I don't. I just more. have a look. I don't know what possesses people to want to be on Big Brother. I mean, you saw them. Is there a waiting room somewhere? I don't know, a, a, a last hope saloon where a bunch of pugnacious losers are sitting around drinking bar varnish? I would rather have my face super glued to the greasy buttocks of a 300 pound German weightlifter. You get the picture. It is a. Uh, what's that? I know you will. I'll present that. Why aren't you in Chile right now? Your... <laughs> 33 men trapped underground, no communication. That must be making you moist. <laughs> and that is how insidious reality TV is. Of course, they're heroes, but last week they were squabbling over who gets to be the last one to come out. Because obviously the last one out is the winner. <laughs> You're being rescued. 
You're not being evicted. It's a fucking rescue. Get in the chamber, you prick. I would rather spend the night in Birmingham. Easy, Rich. All right. I've gone too far. The roads. Davina, I wish you the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Rich Roll there, he's, uh, he's one of the most distinctive voices in comedy, and by that I mean he has a really weird voice. <laughs> you sound like an advert to stop people smoking. Um, <laughs> one of the points of this show is to embarrass Davina, but how do you embarrass the person who presented Love on a Saturday Night and Street Mate? <laughs> you remind them they used to present Prickly Heat on Sky One with Julian Clary. <laughs> oh, there's hitting rock bottom. Dermot O'Leary couldn't be here tonight, but he took time out from his busy schedule, being Simon Cowell's bitch boy, <laughs> to take us through Davina's early career. Here he is. Hi, it's me, Dermot O'Leary, star of The X Factor. <laughs> when I was just first starting out as a presenter, Davina took me under her wing. Her massive bingo. <laughs> It's hard to believe now, I know, but once shouty, patronising Davina was even more successful than me, Dermot O'Leary, star of The X Factor. So, what did I learn from Davina? This is Street Mate. Guys, 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 wait! A simple but brilliant idea. Hey, I've seen you on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Davina. What's your name? Jazz. All right, Jazz. Find a single man, find a single girl, pair them up. Are you at school or at college? School. What could possibly go wrong? How old are you? 30. Oh, my God! <laughs> yeah. She was 13. <laughs> Let's take a look at one of Davina's earliest shows, Prickly Heat. Hello, Prickly Heaters. Welcome to Prickly Heat, the show that makes Baywatch look interesting. This next game is called Chip Gotti. Bum grapes, bad breath. Basically, the game goes like this. At the bar, they will find two pints which they have to down. They also have to put some socks down their... Because I'm afraid size does actually matter. And they sit on the chair with the grapes in their pants, and they go like that. After the first series of Prickly Heat, it became apparent Davina was irreplaceable. Right up until the point she was replaced. <laughs> Now, if there's one thing I associate with Davida, it's class. I don't need any you do. I've got my wonder that, bra. That blouse can't take the strain. <laughs> <laughs> Davina, you've offered me so much advice through the years. I just want to say, thank God I've ignored a lot. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>